Today we're going to take a look at the old mailbag and uh, answer some emails about uh, dispensationalism for perhaps the final time, I don't know. Take a visit to the border and the Trump gag order and a little news roundup. Everybody, stay tuned. Hey, for the best meat you have ever eaten, check out samsbutchershop.com. Go and shop around. When you go to checkout, enter the promo code TRIPLE-T for a 5% discount. Check it out. And a happy Tuesday to you all. I am Trailer Trash Tim. How's your mom and them? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for being here today. I am so glad that you have decided to join us. Thank you so much uh, for being with us uh, over the weekend and yesterday. Uh, I got so much feedback from so many of you, both in the comment section and emails and snail mails and what have you. And I wanted to address one. This is kind of an amalgam, really, but I, I just kind of plucked one email uh, that I want to address uh, with regard to the topic I was uh, talking about yesterday, which was uh, basically dispensationalism. I want to touch on that again, maybe for the final time, try and wrap that up and put a bow on it if I can. But Larry emails and he asks a very good question, which is, can you explain the effects that dispensationalism has on society? An excellent question. And I want to address that. As I uh, explained yesterday, I explained the roots of um, what is the thought with particular regard to eschatology and the state of the nation state, quote unquote, of Israel, uh, with regard to uh, evangelicals in America uh, and a lot of Protestants and uh, Pentecostals and Charismatics. Um, and I kind of explained where that this line of thought came from. It came uh, uh, from a group called the Plymouth Brethren uh, with a man by the name of Inglis, and it came over to the States and was promulgated by the likes of Dwight Moody and C.I. Schofield, uh, and they passed this, this teaching off, this doctrine off, as if it were gospel, which of course it is not, and this all happened in the late 1800s, so it has not been around all that long. However, this thing spread like wildfire throughout uh, throughout America and the West, and so many people in the aforementioned groups uh, latched onto it. And this teaching, this this uh, false theology, uh, basically presents uh, uh, Israel as the uh, the ancestral home of the Jews, which it is. But it also presents the Jews as God's chosen people on the earth, which they are not, not any more than anybody else for that matter. Because, of course, as we know, if you're a Christian, you understand that when Christ came, he established, he nulled the old covenant he had with the Jewish people who killed him. And uh, he established a new covenant for all of mankind, basically. So the notion that the Jews have some sort of special favor now with God and they are his chosen people, his elect, and that the plot of dirt in the Middle East known as Israel is their land is simply false. It is simply not true. It never ceases to amaze me how people that latch on to dispensationalism will bend over backwards to justify the atrocities committed by uh, Jewish people against, uh, for example, Palestinians. The, the things they are doing to some of these people are unspeakable. But these are God's elect, don't you know? So everything is, is okay. Uh, you can justify any of it. When you hold to such a sordid and twisted theology that is such a bad theology and a false theology, it leads you down uh, some really bad roads. But he is asking, can you, can you explain the effects of this thought in society? A most excellent question. We know that the aforementioned groups promote this uh, dispensationalist uh, ideal or theory. Theory is a better word. Uh, they are premillennial, but they believe in things uh, taught such as the rapture, which came from uh, Darby and Schofield and what have you, and Dwight Moody. Um, John Hagee, people like that. <clears throat> it's it's bad theology, but they have latched onto it by the millions. Now, um, this thinking uh, obviously affects those in the aforementioned camp, the evangelicals, the fundamentalists, the Pentecostals, the charismatics, and many in mainline Protestant denominations, many uh, Baptists and uh Probably a lot of a lot of Methodists undoubtedly hold to this dispensational theology that includes all the things I've mentioned, and they they to cut to the chase, folks. 
a lot of these people actually believe, whether they verbalize it or not, but this is what this thing teaches, that there's basically two plans of salvation, one for the Gentiles and one for the Jews, and that no matter what the Jewish people do, uh, at the culmination of time, they will be somehow grafted into the body of Christ. Uh, this is simply not the case. There is, If you are a Christian, uh, there is one way to salvation. It is through Christ and his church, and that is the only way. It is there is there's simply no other way so there's no special provision for the jewish people they have to come to uh christ the lord and the holy trinity the same way anyone else does now but what i want to point out is how widespread this bad theology has has uh has spread throughout all of western culture <clears throat> even among people who do not claim to be christians and i want to point this out this uh, false theology, uh, of course, is promulgated in so many of the aforementioned religious groups, these Protestant denominations, uh, but it also affects uh, the West in terms of philosophy and epistemology um, and, um, and their theology. You know, anybody can have theology. A, a non-religious person can have a theology. An atheist can have a theology. But this thinking affects all of society in one way or another. Uh, it, it affects uh, religious adherents of this theology, those who adhere to it, that is to say. But America is fundamentally, uh, it, historically, a Baptistic sort of culture. <clears throat> the, the free will millennial type, or not millennial, uh, antinomian type of thinking uh, has kind of married itself to, the, to uh, dispensational theology, and it has affected all of Western society, particularly American society, and it has also found its way into Western media, and it has found it, its way into Western governments e even, and it has affected even our foreign policy because you hear, and, and understand what I'm saying, uh, you hear uh, a variation of dispensationalist theology uh, coming from these other quarters, not necessarily religious per se. That is to say, we see support for this nation state of Israel, uh, not only in these uh, Protestant churches, but we also see it in the Western media, and we see it in American politics in Congress every day, you have uh, members of Congress falling all over themselves with support for the Jewish state of Israel, turning a blind eye to the plight of the Palestinians. Uh, you hear it coming from the Oval Office, actually regardless of the occupant. And so the point is, when you hear a variation of dispensationalism and premillennialism coming from all these outlets, uh, the, the hearers hear this coming from their pulpits, they hear it coming from lecterns, they, come at, they hear it coming from some universities, they hear it coming from the media, a variation of it, and they hear it coming from their uh, politicians. So it has a tremendous effect on their way of thinking. When you hear it from religious leaders, politicians, media, etc., 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 it has a profound effect on your own thinking, and you may start thinking, well, that's got to be right. It's apparently what everybody believes. Well, it ain't what everybody believes. It is bad theology, and I went through that yesterday, showing the uh, uh, origins of it and how it has spread like wildfire throughout Western culture. So an excellent question, Larry. I hope that explains how... Uh, this thing is like a hand grenade, and it there. That's why we need clarification uh, to make clear the fact that this dispensationalist theology, which passes itself off as Christian theology, is not. Under no uncertain terms, it is not. It was never taught in the church, the church, for over. Well, it's never been taught in the church, but it was never heard in any. Uh, so-called Christian church until the late 1800s. So that should tell you everything you need to know right there, folks. If it was never taught in the church for 1800 years, uh, then it just doesn't hold water. It just does not uh, pass the muster test at all. What should we believe? Well, I would contend that if, if you are a Christian watching me, 
uh, what should you believe? Well, you should believe what the church has always taught. You should believe uh, uh, creedal Christianity. I, I uh, subscribe to the creed of the church, which is the Nicene Creed, which was formulated the first ecumenical council in Nicaea in the first century, which laid out word for word exactly what we believe. And when it came to a ma the matter of eschatology, the church does believe and proclaims that Christ will return to this earth again. He will return, and that is what we say in the creed. Christ, he, Christ died, he was buried, and he will come again. So we believe that day is going to come, but we do not believe it in terms of dispensational theology. But the point is, that bad theology has infected thinking in all of the West to one degree or another, even among atheists. They still have this mentality about the Jews and about Israel, and that Israel is somehow supposed to be this most favored nation, uh, and it's turned so many people into absolute Zionists. I hope that clears that up, uh, and maybe we don't have to deal with dispensationalism anymore. I want to move on. There's a lot more in the news that I, pardon me, that I want to cover today. Uh, several things I want to touch on real quickly. First of all, I've got to get to the Trump gag order. Judge Tanya Chutkin. Gotta love this dame. I gotta tell you, sorry, ladies. Gotta love this gal. Judge Tanya Chutkin. If she is not a thorn in Trump's side, I don't know what thorns are, but she has issued a gag order. Now, I could go into the details of her gag order, but I don't want to get bogged down in this thing because it's sufficient just to understand uh, that a judge, a sitting judge, has told an American citizen to keep your mouth shut. If this is problematic for you, it should be problematic for you. We've got this little old thing in the United States called the First Amendment. And this judge and this court has deemed itself above the Constitution. They are para the Constitution. What they have, have to say uh, transcends the Constitution, don't you know? Uh, their, their words have more uh, gravity than the Constitution. They're far more important to what the old Constitution says. First Amendment, what is that? No, forget that. I'm going to tell you, you better keep your mouth shut. This is absolutely unconstitutional. Trump is appealing it. He should appeal it. There is no way that a judge can tell a citizen in the, in the United States that you can't talk. Now, you may not like what Trump is saying. Sometimes he makes me cringe. I admit it. But I'm not trying to slap a gag order on him. I, it's never occurred to me to tell Trump, shut your mouth. He can say whatever he wants to say. And if I want to disagree with him, I'll disagree with him. This is unprecedented. It is unconstitutional. It is outrageous. And this case should go over her on appeal. And I'll be real interested to see what happens. All right, another news, uh, noteworthy news item. Uh, how many of you know that uh, in the past week, uh, and I've seen the video, maybe you have as well, we have captured video surveillance of 50, 5 zero, 50 Syrian men crossing the southern border. Okay? 50 Syrian men with no families, just 50 Syrian men. I don't know. Maybe there was a convention of Syrian men in San Antonio or something that I haven't read about. 50 Syrian men with no families, just 50 Syrian men. No problem here, right? I mean, we thought it was all just a, a mama and her couple of kids coming across the border, right? Nothing to see here. No Chinese national, no Muslim terrorist. 50 Syrian men with no families cross the border. And I might point out, these are 50 Syrian men that we know of. And we have it on video. So what do we not know of? How many came across the border uh, that we don't know of? Does that alarm you? Does it concern you? Well, it should if you're an American. And of course, as I've pointed out, this happens on borders all across the West. It happens in Canada. It happens in the UK. It happens in France. It happens in Germany. It happens in Sweden, in Norway, in mass. It is a Western problem on crack. And of course, as we know, the occupant of the White House doesn't give a damn about it. He's doing nothing about it. He's not lifting a finger. He's, in fact, in, in uh, the past few weeks, has ordered a fence cut to facilitate the crossing of illegal aliens. It's utterly outrageous. 
All right, now, um, last Saturday evening, today is Tuesday, last Saturday evening, the occupant of the White House spoke at a dinner. Uh, This is the Human Rights Campaign National Dinner. Uh, He spoke at the Human Rights Campaign National Dinner on Saturday night. And at this dinner, uh, Joe Biden called for an assault weapons ban, and he asked this question. Listen to this. I quote, Who in God's name needs a weapon with a hundred rounds in the chamber? Unquote. Joe Biden, I want you to make note of this now, speaking at the Human Rights Campaign National Dinner on Saturday night, called for a ban on assault weapons yet again and said, Who in God's name needs a weapon with a hundred rounds in the chamber. I've got the answer for you, Uncle Joe. Are you ready for it? I'll tell you who needs it. I'll tell you who needs a weapon with a hundred rounds in the chamber. How about anyone who sees terrorists sailing into their neighborhoods suspended from paragliders? You think maybe they could use a weapon with a hundred rounds? I think maybe they could use a weapon with 200 rounds, if you ask me. 500 rounds. How about then? Or do you think that if I look up in my the skies of my neighborhood and I see terror, or I see, I don't, I don't know if they're terrorists or not, but I see obviously armed individuals who are paragliding into my neighborhood or parasailing or whatever you call it, suspended from these drone-like uh toys, or or not toys, these contraptions, um, and they're carrying weapons with them, I probably am going to want to have quite a few rounds to defend me, mine, and ours. You know what I'm saying? There's your answer, Joe. Now, I've got two more questions for you, Uncle Joe. Two questions. The first question is this. What, pray tell... Folks, listen to this. I've never heard anybody address this. I've never heard anybody ask him this. I I, want to know an answer to this question. You keep harping on assault weapons, Mr. Biden, and all you God-loving Democrats. You keep harping on assault weapons. Now, I've got this question for you, and it is this. What is an assault weapon? What is an assault weapon? Can you define that for me? Now, I know that they'd be scrambling for the answer and it would be something like an AR-15. Well, that's what we're talking about. These assault weapons. Well, let me ask you a question. Bear with me just a moment. Let me go over into my kitchen and grab a pair of tongs. If somebody's rushing in here and they want to attack me, could I use this on them? And if I did, would a pair of tongs be an assault weapon? You remember the lamp that Hillary threw at Bill? Was that Would Bill consider that lamp an assault weapon? How about a butcher knife? Is that an assault weapon? How about a 22 pistol? Is that an assault weapon? How about a, a slingshot? Is that an assault weapon? I mean, if I took a pillow and held it over your head long enough, is this an assault weapon? If you couldn't breathe, maybe you'd be saying, get this assault weapon off of my mouth. Anything can be an assault weapon, Joe. Why don't you... This just irks me to no end. The fact that these Democrats will not simply be honest. Why don't you just admit what it is you're actually saying, which is you want America to give up their guns. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying, but you ain't got the guts to say that, and you damn well know it. So you come up with this terminology, oh, it's an assault weapon. Man, come on. Anything can be an assault weapon. Just be honest. Tell us what you really think, because we know what you really think. You just ain't got the guts to say it, Joe. Man, these people. And there's one more thing that he said that I want to address, my last question to him. He said, who in God's name needs a weapon with 100 rounds in the chamber? I think I've addressed this before, but it bears repeating. Joe, what I need is none of your business. 
I will determine what it is that I need. Sir, when you go out in public, you need a lot of security, don't you? You need a, a, a armor-plated limousine and a secret service agents who are carrying a lot of heat. That's what you need, right? That's what you think you need, and you probably do need that. Well, I will determine what I need, not you. What you need is none, what I need is none of your business. What I need is nobody's business but mine. What my neighbor needs is none of my business. He can determine that for himself. God, these Democrats kill me. They are such buttinskis. They cannot. They have to meddle in every private citizen's affairs. They got to know what you're doing. What are your motivations? What do you own? How much money have you got? What are you driving? Is it an EV? What kind of house are you living in? How much land do you own? Five acres? Well, you don't need five acres. I mean, that's the trend, is it not? It's none of your business what I need. Maybe all I need is a pea shooter, but maybe what I need is an AR. It doesn't matter. It's none of your business. I will decide what I need, not you. So back off, big guy. All right, one more thing because I'm getting hot. And it's cold, but I'm getting hot. One more thing and we'll close, close out. Oh, we live in a land of fruits and nuts, don't we? All right, this is some serious news I've got to cover real quickly. Joe Biden just approved, he did this either today or yesterday, today is Tuesday, he just approved the, quote, potential deployment of 2,000 American troops to, anybody want to guess? You got it, Israel. That's right. 2,000 troops have been potentially deployed to Israel. Not in a combat role, mind you. We're just there for, you know, to advise and counsel and lend a hand to those who are, you know, actually doing some fighting there. Have we ever heard this before? You bet your bottom dollar we've heard it before. You know where we've heard it before? We heard it in Korea. We heard it in Vietnam. No, no, no. We're just sending advisors. They're just going to go over there and give a few tips to the people who are doing the actual fighting. And what happens every time? Folks, I'm telling you, we are in perilous times, believe you me. Uh, the potential, uh, if you just set aside what's happening in Ukraine and our involve, our unconstitutional involvement there, that should bother you enough, this war in Israel between Israel and Hamas has the potential to escalate into something really big, really fast. Uh, if Iran gets involved in this thing, which they very well could, uh, this thing could blow up real fast because Iran is a player, let me tell you. Uh, if Syria gets involved, if Egypt gets involved, if Jordan gets involved, if Iran gets involved, it is going to be uh, disastrous because it may have a suction effect of pulling in other nations into this uh, this epicenter uh, in in Israel and in Gaza, where, of course, the Jews are basically committing atrocities against the Gazans. But that's okay. If you think the Jews are God's chosen people, it, it's okay what they're doing to them, right? Yeah, let's keep things in perspective, shall we? If you are a Christian, your sympathy should be with these people who are suffering under the hands of the Jews. But no... If you're a dispensationalist, the Jews are God's chosen people, and what they do is just hunky-dory in your book. If Iran gets involved, it's a whole new ball game, and I'm telling you, the United States is broke militarily. We are spent. Uh, we have used so many of our resources, not only in Ukraine, but elsewhere in other hot spots around the world, and I do not know, and I will be very honest about this, I do not know if we uh, could handle a conflict, the, the size and scope of what this situation in Israel could turn into, we would be so much better, far off, be better off if we would simply bring our troops home from places like Ukraine and now Israel, 
put them on our southern border, and as we say in the south, tend to our own biscuits. Is that going to happen? I gravely doubt it. That's what's going on, folks. Hey, give me your comments down below. Thank you so much for uh, commenting on all the videos. I'm doing my best to get to them and, and answer a few if I can. I am swamped both with work, my regular job, and with the preparation and all the editing and everything that goes on with this channel. A lot of, a lot of writing, a lot of stuff that goes on uh, behind the scenes. It takes a lot of time, but I love it. It's great. Uh, but I'm, I'm getting to you. i got to answer a lot of emails and snail mails and all that kind of jazz as much as I can anyway. Anyway, I'd still love to hear your comments down below. Give this video a big thumbs up if you would. I would really appreciate that. If you have not yet subscribed to the Trailer Trash Tim channel, as long as you are not an illegal alien, you are a legal uh, resident of your nation, and as long as you do not wear a face mask, you are more than welcome to come and subscribe to the channel. Hit that button down below and subscribe and join our growing community. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I really appreciate you being here with me today. This is Trailer Trash Tim, and I will see you tomorrow.